welcome to the distance lab for angular motion. This lab actually combines two labs. In order to get things worked into the end of the semester, uh, I've taken both uh, momentum labs uh, and combined them into one. I've reduced some uh, procedures. I've changed some of the trials uh, to make it all fit together. You can still use the online manual for both labs. Uh, the format is the same. Some of the details have changed, so don't panic. Uh, everything you need to know is in the capstone file, which contains the data. This video is just showing you how I captured that data. This is our device. This is the sensor that collects everything. It's a Pasco rotary motion sensor. It's designed that this little axle spins, and there's a device inside that measures that spin. And in this case, we'll uh, calculate the angular velocity of whatever we have sitting here. In order to hold something and to uh, generate the torque, we need a pulley. This pulley has three different uh, uh, sizes. The large one has a black rubber band in it used for something else. Right now it's trapping my wire. Uh, the larger pulley and the smaller pulley. We're going to use the smaller pulley for this lab exclusively. I also have a piece of thread here so that it's light and I have a mass holder which you've probably seen in other labs and a set of masks to work on this. So for procedure one we need to set this thing up. It sits there nicely. This is the device that we're going to uh, spin. Uh, it's a steel rod with sliding masses on either end in brass. It mounts to the pulley here. There's a little set of horns here. I have to be sure to uh, get it in the right position because we can't allow it to slip. If you look in your textbook and read about angular momentum, you'll understand what I mean by slipping. And there it is. We start with the uh, masses at the ends of this rod, maximum extent. And to do a run, I'm going to wrap the thread around that lower pulley until I've got a certain amount there. I want to keep it fairly evenly wrapped because if the radius changes too much that's going to change my torque and now I'm ready to go. So there it is. Now this mass holder is only uh, just under five grams. I've recorded all the masses you need in the capstone file. So I'm going to add a 10 gram mass. So I'm starting off with 14.95 uh, grams I believe it is as I said, recorded in the capstone file. And in order to keep it there, I want something to jam it. There we go. So I'm ready to go. I go to capstone, I press record, and I remove the block. And it starts to accelerate this mass due to gravity. So we have a nice constant acceleration and that picks up here by generating a torque from that wire. I let it run for about 10 seconds and I stop it. And then I take another mass, 10 more grams. I put it on here and I set it up again. And I put here something to hold on to it. I press record on capstone again. And I let it go for 10 seconds. I did this 10 times. All the masses you require are written in the capstone file. The data can be accessed on the data page. And I think I can show you what it looks like. There you go. It will collect uh, angular velocity 
that's been accelerated with a constant acceleration. You should know what that all means, and you should know what to do with the data when you see it. Uh, the online manual, of course, uh, will give you some hints as well. And that's procedure one. So what we've got is uh, we're checking the uh, relationship between torque and angular acceleration, keeping the moment of inertia constant. Constant because I didn't change this geometry. If I change this geometry like this, I move it in two centimeters. I'm doing it by eye here, but I didn't when I collected the data. I would used a caliper when I was doing the data and very carefully made sure that they were moved in two centimeters at a time and I did seven runs. The data is all in the data page. And then I rotated it, this time keeping mass constant and seeing what difference the change in geometry made. Again, the data is in the file. You should know what to do with it when you look at it. You can read through the manual and do the analysis. It shouldn't be all that difficult. Procedure three, we're going to shift to a different device. The sensor remains the same. But now, I don't want to use masses. I want to use conservation of momentum. So conservation of momentum is much like a linear momentum. You're going to look at before and after shots, and you're going to compare them because if it's conserved, it shouldn't change in time. Here, instead of a collision, well, you're still going to have a collision. I'm going to drop things on it. So I've set this up. I need a little platform to work on. And there is my platform. So the way this works is it's a little difficult to know uh, what the moment of inertia is of all of this. Because it's not just a spinning platform, it's the axle plus whatever machine reasons that. So what we're going to do is capture the system's moment of inertia. And that's what we do now. Um, I lost my thread, but I'm going to wrap the thread around the little circular pulley. I'm going to drop it over here, and it's going to pull and accelerate this just the way it did with the bar. From that, you can calculate the angular momentum of the system. Once you have that, and you have the change in angular momentum after the drop, which I'll demonstrate in a second, you can calculate the angular momentum of the devices. So here we're ready. I press record on capstone. I spin this by hand. I hold this and try and keep it centered and drop it. When I do, the system will have a higher moment of inertia. So its angular velocity will drop. And you will see that in the data. In fact, I'm sure I can show you. If I go here and I take the disk, there you go. You see, I had an initial angular velocity. I dropped the disk. The angular velocity dropped. You can now use conservation of uh, angular momentum to determine what the angular momentum of the new system is. You'll subtract the old system, and you'll get the moment of inertia of this disk. What do you compare it to? Well, this is a standard uh, geometry. And there are formulas that will allow you to calculate these. You can look them up. Wikipedia is your friend. Uh, this is a disk, so it's going to be 1 half mr squared with the radius. The radius is included in the file. It was measured with a caliper. The mass is also in the file. And the last procedure is the same thing except using this disk. This disk is heavier, so it's uh, not quite as easy to do. I had to do it several times, but again, I press go on the capstone, I spin this up, I center it, I drop, 
the angular velocity falls. The new angular velocity plus the moment of inertia of this system with the ring has changed from the angular velocity of the system without the ring. And you can use that change plus what you know about this system to calculate this. Again, the formula you can look up. Uh, the, you need both inside and outside radius and the mass. They're all given in the file. And that's it. One page report. Uh, you can use the uh, data sheet as a model for the tables to keep the data. Just remember, I made changes, so it's not going to match exactly. Um, you can answer for conclusions. You can answer the post lab questions, which are also on the data sheet. And I guess that's it. Good luck. Any problems? Ask your instructor. Bye now.